We have Daniel Naroditsky's top five brilliant moves. That man is brilliant. We all know Danya, commentator, legend, half man, half everything else. Daniel Naroditsky. This is number five. This one is against Grandmaster Dmitry Kolars out of Germany. Let's get right into it. Daniel Naroditsky's playing white. Of course, what happened in this position was E4. E4 attacking the knight. The knight is hanging. First off, what's going on? We got double rooks. Of course, there's some problems here with the king. If you move the rook, rook takes B2. It's kind of shaky. It's double edge. What is actually going on? You also have a pin going on, but you can't really use it yet because the bishop's defending the g-pawn. Right now, the knight's hanging. What does uh, Daniel do? Knight E5. He attacks the queen. Pretty easy move to make. Of course, the engine doesn't like it as much. They like knight g5 because of the sequence of moves that black can play, which is queen to d6 attacking the knight. The knight is actually hanging. The pawn is actually hanging as well. Pretty easy move to find next, which is d4 defending the knight. The knight is now defended. Of course, we don't have to worry about any checks or any problems like that. And the move here is supposed to be rook takes f6. Now, queen takes f6 is the move that was played in the game, and it looks totally fine, but it's a double question mark move. It is white to move here. What did Daniel Naradisky play in this position? Hopefully you paused the video. Hopefully you really tried to figure this one out, okay? The move here is, and it's brilliant, by the way. Are you ready for this? Five, four, three, one. Rook takes g6. Oh my goodness. There it is. It's on the board. Hopefully you saw that. Wow, rook takes g6, what a move. What a move. Now, of course, the queen is hanging. What are you doing? What are you doing, bro? Your queen is hanging. If he takes the queen, well, that's very mean. Get this off the screen after rook g8 check, rook takes, and then knight f7 is mate because of the other rook stopping the king from moving, and the king is in check due to knight f7. Beautiful checkmate. Once again, that is nasty there. Hopefully, you're doing your puzzle rush. Queen takes h4. Runs into rook g8, rook takes, knight f7, is checkmate, start a new game. Beautiful. Okay, so he saw this. Rook takes g6, boom, that happened. Now, of course, Dimitri goes with, hey, I see that, that's cute, that's fun. Oh, that was nice, Danya, nice trick. Rook takes b2 with check. Right, king has to move back because if you block the connection, you end up losing a rook. Also, the mate's not there anymore. So, we actually go king h1, and then queen takes e5. That's a very, very sharp move. Very cool stuff. Right, queen takes e5. Of course, the problem here is, of course, rook g8. Once again, the queen's also hanging. Where do you even move the queen comfortably? You really don't have a move. And just says best move is take the rook. He chose taking the knight. Queen takes knight. Okay, cool. Hopefully, we have something here, says black. D takes e5, taking back the queen. B, uh, bishop takes rook, and rook takes bishop. And that was it. The game was over. The game could have continued here for with rook b1 and uh, rook to g1 to defend it. And he's just up a queen here. This was nasty. Let's go back and look at that one more time for the people in the back that missed that. Of course, the, it started from here. And we have knight e5 getting out of danger, attacking the queen. Queen goes to d6 to pin the knight, also attacking the pawn. Easy move, defend it. Queen takes f6, trying to trade, believing, oh, I'm fine. Yeah, let's release this pressure that you have because looks kind of annoying. And then Daniel Nerdisky says, I got you, big fella. Rook takes g6, get him off the board. That's a nasty one. Because again, after you take the queen, rook g8 is mate. I'm also attacking the queen. If you take with the bishop here, in fact, it's actually look at that. If you take with the bishop here, we have an easy move. Knight takes g6. Ouch. Knight takes g6 here. Of course, if queen takes, we take with the rook. We can also come back and block as well. If you move the king anywhere, king g8, king g7, king anything, we're going to take this rook with check. It's going to be decisive results. King g8 is actually going to lose to losing the queen in many cases here. So pretty stuff tough. Uh, pretty stuff. Pretty tough stuff here. In fact, the engine says uh, best move is queen takes g6. But this was number five out of the five that we're going to go over. Brilliant moves. Let's look at number four. Here we are with brilliant move number four from Daniel Nerdisky. And this time he's facing Yaspo. Everybody knows him. That's Jose Martinez. Very, very strong player. As you see, he's 30-90 when he was playing this game against Daniel Nerdisky. So, so a last move here was g6 from um, from uh, a Jasper here, after g6 hitting the bishop, we move the bishop away. Pretty easy move, bishop to g4. Pawn structure is kind of strange for black. We do have a nice pawn on e5. We need to complete development. Rooks are disconnected. There is some pressure down the f-file. 
Also with maybe even some sacrifices here on F2, trying to uh, to use the fact that we do have the Rook on the F file, maybe trying to use the F file as much as we can. So of course, Black actually play, makes a move, Queen E7, defends G5, because that actually is hanging, and last move here, that actually is a, a pawn that can be captured. So defended, connecting my Rooks at the same time, a very easy move. Um, we need to have all of our pieces in the game, so this next move makes total sense from Daniel. Playing Bishop to D2, connect my Rooks. I have not moved it. How do I improve my position? Moving forward, my bishop is better on d2 than it was on c1, and my rook can finally get into the game. Now, here we go. From Yasmin plays knight h6. Very logical move here, attacking the bishop. If you move this bishop, I'm going to play g4. So you may make a move like h3, right? Or move the knight to defend the bishop on g4. Well, that's actually up to you, chat. It's on you. What do you do in this position? In fact, what did Daniel Nerdisky play in this position? Why to move? Here it is, guys. Of course, here, the best defense is offense. So we take our queen and we go to a6. Psych. This is a family channel, okay? The move here is bishop e6. That is the move. Bishop e6. That's the offense we were looking for there. That's a wild move. Of course, you're going to get these from Daniel Naroditsky, right? Of course, a tactician, very strong player. We know this. A magician, if you will. Bishop takes e6, though. Takes a free pawn, of course, and we say free, well, I mean, he can just take the bishop, which he does. Queen takes e6. Well, this is now the move for the follow-up, or the follow-up for the move. It's white to move. What do you do in this position? We just gave up this bishop for the pawn. Are we going to play knight to g5? Bishop g5, right? Right? What is it? It's white to move. What do you do? Okay, so if nothing goes to g5 here. That's going to be a blunder. Get it off the screen. But the move that does work, and it's brilliant, is queen takes e4. Sack the queen. Sack the queen. The whole thing. Queen takes e4. Daniel Nardisky says, if I sack, I'm going to get it right back. Just like that. After d takes e4, knight takes g5, and we live. Yikes. Decisive results. Move the king. Knight takes e6, and we're looking good here. We should be able to convert this. Of course, the rook's hanging, but also the knight's hanging. Yeah, okay, you can go rook e8, take my knight, I'll take your bishop. But this in game's definitely winning, especially with um, the problems in the pawn structure, or especially uh, the break here in the pawn structure, and white having actually an extra pawn there, at least two for the time being, as this one might be gone. But with that being said, this did not happen. In fact, what did happen in the game was after bishop takes e6, queen takes e6, queen takes e4, Rook to f5. And of course, Daniel Nardisky, Nardisky after moving his queen, was go was able to go on to convert this game. But of course, going back here, this is the part that was brilliant. This is the part we wanted to highlight. Was, um, starting from here, after knight h6, attacking the bishop, he moves it to e6. Bishop takes e6, attacking the rook, taking a pawn. Queen takes e6, and then boom. We just want a pawn out of that, and your structure is garbage here. It's absolutely terrible structure. Your king safety is worse than mine. I have a pass pawn. I'm doing good as white. This was number four. Now, let's move on to number three. Here we go, guys, with number three from Nerdisky in the five brilliant moves from Daniel Nerdisky. This is the third one. In this one, he's actually facing Lonely Queen, Grandmaster here, with the black pieces. Um, playing Lonely Queen is playing black, and Daniel Nerdisky is playing white. In this position right here, let's actually see what happened. This looks like some type of Scandinavian Kiro Khan with an early h5. Believe it or not, it was actually an h3 move one opening here. And then um, h5 move two opening here. So very strange. But we reached this position with what looks like some type of Scandinavian or Kiro Khan uh, esque here. Uh, some, something like that, right? With the inclusions of h3 and h5, which is very possible. Some type of like, you know, you would see the uh, Tau variations, but that's like h4. But okay, h3 trying to play g4. You could see this, right? Not h3 and h5 move one. Never would have thought that would have came from this opening. But nevertheless, here we go. Of course, the last move was queen to c7 from lonely queen. And Nerdisky makes a very easy move, rook e1. This reminds me a lot of the Scandinavian positions. In fact, Wesley So has some very nice files on how to really crush the Scandinavian here. And this reminds me of that. The reason being is because after rook to e1, you have the knight e6, you have knight f7, you have rook e6. You have all this stuff coming like right here. And on e6 and f7, these squares are very soft, especially with the king in its center. Nevertheless, of course, black says, okay, you know what? You're not really threatening anything just yet, so I'm going to kick you away. b5 hits the bishop, makes logical sense. Attack the bishop. 
uh, please trade or go back to b3 but at least i get some space i can now think out of the bishop i may even go queen side because i did make h5 as a move here both sides of the board are pretty rough for the king but i'd rather castle maybe where some pieces are so after b5 bishop to d3 right just i in this way saying yeah if you castle this way you might as well hit the button resign on the spot right because there's got to be something here i mean of course uh looks are very deceiving in chess here but uh and, and calculation is very important make sure you calculate but I mean, casting looks really crazy, right? So bishop to d3, black did not castle here. Lonely queen chose bishop to b7. But this one gets him sent to heaven immediately. White to move. What is the move here? Daniel Nardisky was able to find it. This combination is so sick. It's white to move. What do you do in this position? Okay, here it is. So first move from Daniel Nardisky is we pick it up and we put it down. Rook takes e6, hitting, splitting, hitting, splitting. Rook takes e6. Yeah, you see this all the time in the Scandinavian. And uh, you'll see this in Sicilians. In fact, when you sacrifice something on e6, knight orfs, shows in variations of the Sicilians, right? I mean, this is very important to understand is sacrificing on e6. Well, what's the key? What's the idea? Of course, if he ever takes this rook here, well, then we go bishop g6 check. And it's a wrap. You could also start with knight e6. This is beautiful. Bishop g6, if king f8 or d8, anything 8, we're just going to hit him on e6. And that's going to be nasty, right? We pick up the queen um, no matter where he goes. Pretty, pretty, pretty nasty stuff there. Or you could even do knight e6 first, which is even cooler. The engine likes this better. But after the queen moves, I mean, that's pretty nasty, mate. <laughs> Bishop g6 may get him off the board. Gross. So uh, that's checkmate. Rook takes e6 happen. So his opponent says, oh, you're not about to hit me like that. So he steps out the way with king to f8. After the king f8 move, okay, what do we do in this position right here? After king f8, where do you think you go right now? Where do you think you go after king f8? Right to move. Increase the pressure. That's how I'm going to help you here. You know, pause the video if you need to, come back, because I can understand if you don't find a move here. It's not easy to find. White to move, what do you do? Here we go. And the move is... Queen e2, very simple. Because for some people are not expecting that. They're expecting, like, holding your breath, like, it's... No, it's not. <laughs> it's just queen e2. <laughs> very simple move, increase the pressure. We're not going to take twice, right? So what's the idea? What's the idea? Black's like, yeah, I don't know what your idea is. So C5, and you thought Rook E6 was nice. You thought Rook E6 was the, the most brilliant thing ever, which, of course, okay, we gave it to him. Yes, it was great. But if you thought that was brilliant, watch this next sequence of moves. Why to move? What do you do? I hope you brought the Tao hat, right? Now, what does Tao say? Shout out to Grandfather Tao. Grandfather Tao says, sack first, think later. That's what they, he taught us back in the day. Here it is. Knight a 7 Oh my goodness. Wait, what? Stop. Okay, hold up. Knight takes f7. So we sack on e6. Then we sack on f7. This doesn't make any sense. Are we going to play knight g5? Right? Why would we do this? Because he could just take it. King takes f7. This doesn't make any sense to me. Knight g5 is a terrible move. I'm just going to take it. What are you doing? Bishop g6? I'm going to move the king back to f8. It doesn't work unless you find this move as well. Rook takes c7. I'm done. Rook takes c7. It's on over word, bro. If somebody get this man hey, check in. Yeah, yeah, we gotta check in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta we gotta check in. Yeah, yeah, him over there. We gotta check in. Rook takes e7. After knight takes e7. Now we go knight g5. And you can resign right here. You can hit the button, my guy. Oh my goodness, this is beautiful. This is this is probably the sickest, one of the sickest combinations out there. Right now, if you see, rook takes e6 is absolutely brilliant. Of course, as you know why, you can't take it. So I sidestep. Queen e2 increased the pressure with the idea of sacking everything. Okay, c5, knight takes f7. King takes, draw the king out. Rook takes e7. After knight takes e7, this is why queen e2 was important. You can't take with the queen or the king. After knight takes e7, then we play knight g5 check, and that's a resi. Hit the button, my guy. If king e8, bishop g6 is checked, right? Let's just throw it up here. Boom, knight e6 is going to be nasty once again. If you go king to g8, we go queen e6. Come on now, right? This is a family channel. And then after king f8, knight, knight check here. If you go king, like, where do you put the king? Oh, nowhere. 
Oh, nowhere. Yeah, you don't have any squares, really. So, with that being said, the game was over after 95 check, and this was a wrap. It was a resignation there. Daniel Nerdisky, clinical, precision, magician. That was nasty. That was number three. Let's move to number two. Here we go, guys, with number two. This is Nerdisky playing with the black pieces against Andrew Tang, Penguin GM. A very strong one, of course. This one is actually a King's Indian defense, as we know. Um, Nerdisky is a specialist there. He loves the King's Indian. Plays very, very great, aggressive attacking chess. You can see from his King's Indians here. And here we go. Now, last move. This was a, a same-ish variation with the uh, early F3. Casting on opposite sides here. So we know stuff's getting crazy. Looks like Daniel was able to get some type of King's side attack very quickly. After King to B1 being the last move. Bishop E6 from Nerdisky, which is putting pressure. And you see the bishops like swiping the board here. After Bishop E6, D5 from Tang. And after the d5 move, it's on you. So it's black to move. What do you do in this position? What do you do in this position? Take a look. Lots of things going on. You know something's here. You can smell it in the water. Here it is. After the d5 move. Knight takes d5. Sack it. Of course. Of course we sack it, but you got to have the follow-up to see the sack first. So after knight takes d5, we open up the bishop. Very, very nice um, diagonals for the bishop here. But we did sacrifice a whole piece. So after e takes d5, what is your follow-up? What is your follow-up? Come on, what is it? I know you got it. What is it? Because if you saw that, then you had to see the follow-up, right? Of course, if you didn't, that's okay. But work on seeing that follow-up. After e takes d5, the follow-up is bishop to f5. Check. Best move is actually king to c1. If you go king a1, you're done, right? And that's a wrap. But king c1 was uh, the better move, and followed by that will be queen a4, believe it or not. It's a very complicated game still after knight to g3 and rook takes e3. It's, like, ridiculous, right? King c1, queen a4, knight g3, rook takes. With the idea of, like, queen here, knight takes f5, and then the engine gives b3. Bro, let me just... Let's just go back. What is actually going on here? There's, there's This is ridiculous, right? There's so much going on. But this didn't happen. Andrew Tang with King A1, which is actually very strange to go here. But, I mean, he was like, well, I am on a C file. Like, which way do we actually go? I mean, this was actually the worst way because it does run into the diagonal here. But now it is up to you. What do you do in this position right here? It is black to move. What do you do right now? Queen's pinned, by the way. So if you're trying to get froggy here and just, oh, take the pawn. <laughs> Yeah, you would just, you know, lose the queen. Maybe you take on e3. Maybe you take on b2. Maybe you develop a piece, try to get the rook to b8. What's the plan? What do you do here? Hopefully you did your puzzle rush and your tactics because the move here is sack the queen. Sack the queen. B takes a3. What do you mean? What you thought we was going to play knight d7 here? Come on, you've lost your mind. B takes a3. After queen takes a5, it's mate on the board. Pawn or the bishop, your choice. Whatever you like. It's mate. However you look at it. It's going to be checkmate but with a nasty bishop, two bishops and the pawn. Yikes. Oof. Okay, B takes a3. He's like, I'm not falling for that. You're not about to get me, but I can't block it. Watch this. Knight e to c3. Ha ha. I gotcha. Right, you thought you got me? Well, I got you, big fella. Well, of course, here's another sack. Boom! Rook takes e3. You didn't even see that coming. Where did that even come from? You didn't even know the rook was right. It didn't even feel like it was right here, right? Rook takes e3. Queen takes e3. A takes b2, right? Drawing the king out. And then a subtle move. Right now, it is minus 7. It is minus 7. We just subtle move. Can you find it? Fine. Can you find it? Before I make it, very subtle move here. Very, very just... Eh... Let's make this move. Yeah, let's do this, right? But okay, right? Where are we going here? Black to move. Very easy move to make. Knight d7. <laughs> Very calm move. Because you need to get another piece. Everything is doing what it's supposed to do. Queen doesn't have any good checks. Just because you see a check doesn't mean that you make the check, right? Rook to b8 is going to be next, right? Very strong. You also can increase the pressure by knight to b6 with a knight a4 idea. Sometimes maybe even knight e5, but this one does block the bishop, and you can't go to c4 just yet. But knight to d7, bishop to d3, blocking some diagonal so I can hide my king. Rook to b8, king to c2, right? After king c2, there's a beautiful move, knight e5. And you're like, wait, what? We just blocked a bit. We just, what is this? 
We just blocked the like the diagonal. We can't go knight c4. He's about to take on f5. And he does. He takes on f5. And now it's up to you. So you're like, wait, what do we just do here? Why did Daniel play this? What is he doing? What is he doing? It's black to move. What do you do? What is Daniel doing? What do you do? What do you do? Oh, oh, you do your tactics and you make a move like this. Work B2 and stare at him real hard and uncomfortably. Yeah, look at that move right there. Rook B2, that's a move. Oh my goodness. That is a move for a move, right? If King to takes B2, obviously knight C4 check, because the bishop is now gone. What? A sick move. Rook to B2. So King to C1. And it, man, I mean the tactics here. One of my favorite players is Daniel Nerdisky. Of course, you Carl Nakamura as well. You got Perugia, you got Tao and, and Carlson. But Queen A3 is nasty very strong move and a resignation was here because i'm going to have decisive results the king can't move really anywhere anything i do is with check this is crazy this is still hanging here i mean this is insane very sick very sick and of course they always like to give you a line of how something could continue and the line would have continued like rook d2 says this is best move takes king rook check and take on h1 f4 and bishop h6 and this is what um what they would give but there was a resignation here after queen a3. Once again, let's see that wicked attack one more time here. This is what happens in the king's Indian when it really works. King a1, he took on a3. Very nice. Queen's hanging. He's like, take it. He's like, no, I'm not going to do that. So rook takes e3. Okay, cool, bro. You're going to have to take something. I'm going to draw the king out. Takes, takes on b2. Knight d7, beautiful. Bishop d3, rook b8. 95 and you have to go 95 with the intention to know that you were about to go rook to b2 next level chess here very brilliant from Danya after uh, knight, uh bishop takes f5 rook b2 king c1 queen a3 and the game was over Woo! that was number two all right guys let's move on to number one here we are with the final one the brilliant move number one here from Daniel Naroditsky. He's playing with the black pieces against Brandon Jacobson. Brando, we know him. Now, of course, this is a very, very crazy game after these next few moves. Well, let's see what happens in this position here. And white plays E4. So, of course, very strong pawn, strong center. But the king is quite weak. If you see on the diagonals and the just the squares around the king are extremely weak. If we can deal with this, then we can win. But we can't. We don't have any pawn breaks or way to put pressure on the center right now, or at least this pawn chain um, and the central pawn. We would have to play something like f5 or d5. f5 is extremely risky, and it takes a move to do so. And d5, we don't have a d pawn. So well, the only way we can get anything going is sacrificing here. But you need to sacrifice at the right moment. But of course, we need more pressure. Hence, rook 88. Hey, might be sacking. Are we? Maybe. Maybe not. He goes rook to d2 and says, I dare you, bro. I don't believe in you. Now, the question is, do you sack this or do you not? It is black to move in this position. What do you do? Do you sack on e4? Do we, you know, bishop takes, knight takes, like, or do we do rook take? Do we do, or do, or do we increase the pressure? Maybe knight's five, queen c6, g5. That's a crazy move. Maybe you move the knight. Go with that f5 idea. What do we do in this position? Is black to move. Here it is. Nerdisky says, well, rook to d2, you didn't believe me. And when they don't believe you, that's when you do it. Knight takes e4, there it is. Now, of course, don't follow that at home because it may be wrong. Make sure you're calculating over everything. Calculation, right? Knight takes e4 is on the board. That's a big boy move from a big fella. Knight takes e4. Of course, I'm giving up a whole piece for a pawn. So f takes e4 happens. He's like, cool, you do it once. I'll do it again. Rick takes e4. If knight takes e4, I mean, come on. Now bishop takes e4, and you can just hit the button. Hit the That's the resign button. That's what that is. Rick takes e4, so he steps out of the way, king h2. And you did your little sack, you know what I mean? You did your little sack and thought you was all brilliant and stuff, even though this is your brilliant moves video. What are you supposed to do now? All right, you down a piece, and I move my king out the way. What is this? Black to move. What do you do? Well, a lot of times, one brilliant move can be followed up with another. Rook takes f4. Get that off the board, bro. Get it off of the board. Rook takes f4. Very strong move. Very, very strong. Getting rid of one of the defenders of the king. G takes f4. Had to be played. But the follow-up is the hard power here. Now, pause the video. Come back in a few minutes if you really need to here. This one actually does take some calculation. And you have to figure out where you want to put your queen. What's the best spot for it? Black to move. What do you do? What do we do? 
Take your time here. This is not one that you just immediately find and play. If you find the move, great. Definitely do a little bit of calculation to it and some double checking. But the move here was, and the best move is queen to f6. Attacking both of these. Queen e3 actually doesn't work. So if you said queen e3, good looking, good checking, but not the right move. Um, queen f6 is a double attack here. Very strong double attack. It also frees the e3 square for a rook if we need to sometimes, if we need to go somewhere like here. So rook to g2, defending all of the squares around the king. You can't even really defend this too much. There was rook e3, by the way, coming, especially if you wanted to play like a king h3. So rook to g2, giving some material back, but we don't need to take this at all. Says Daniel Nerdisky. Queen takes h4. We'll check. King to g1. And watch this move right here. This is precise, precision, the strongest, bringing more pieces into the game. You learn something every time you see moves like this. Is rook to e3. What a nice move. Quiet. Very quiet. Just rook e3. And tell me where do you go? What do you do next? What do you even do? There's a threat of rook h3. Right, moving the rook always runs into weird stuff. You also have rook g3 if you move the rook. Like, what happened? I mean, black's down a whole rook. Or are they, right? This rook is out of the game. If you put this rook off the board, it would be like the same position. Because this is how irrelevant the rook is. If the rook was active, everything would be different. But it's not even active. And it's giving black so many chances here. After rook e3, queen f2. Sounds, it seems like a you know very logical move. Trade them off, bro. We got to get this stuff off the board. Yeah, this was fun and all, but you got to get this off the board. Queen h3 from Naradinsky. After queen h3, the move is knight to d1. Attacking the rook. Pieces go backwards. It's a pretty good move, right? It attacks the rook. But it's a pretty good move unless you find this move right here. Black to move. Finish it. Finish him. What do you do? It is black to move. Where did Naradinsky go? Here it is. Hopefully you were doing your puzzle rush, guys. I'm going to say easy one. Ricky won. And he's done. He resigns as you see the flag. But Ricky won. Uh, Ricky won check. After Ricky won, king, uh, queen takes e1. And queen g2 checkmate is the idea. If queen f1, queen g2. Really, you can just have this on pre-move. Um, queen g2 is checkmate basically no matter what. Beautiful, brilliant. In fact, if we go back and look at that one more time, rook to d2. In fact, here was where it started. e4. Double the rooks. Sick. Sack! Sack again! Bring another piece in the game. Right, check. Bring the rook in. Make sure everything's ready to work. Queen F2. No trades for you, my guy. Knight to D1. Rookie 1, and he's done. Brilliant. Precision. Tactics. Fun. Everything we wanted to see um, here in these games today. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this one. This was awesome. I had a great time with you. Make sure you put your comments in the chat of stuff that you like. And if you found some of the moves, guys. And if you like this video, then make sure you check the next ones as well. And we'll see you guys on the next video.